So the, uh, I thank for the invitation. The organizers suggested that before I introduce Kim, our invited speaker, uh, that, I, that I preach the previous lectures to Kim's work. So it will be a bit a longer intro, uh, introduction uh, to Kim Naismith. I start with uh, this provocative statement, evolution produces life. The major purpose of life is to perpetuate its survival. Uh, it's it's a, a deterministic view of life, uh, an emergent view of, of life, uh, a quality that ex began to exist with life. Uh, this, this slide summarized what, what this means to, to, to survive. It means that uh, the genome has been transmitted in a correct way. The essential of survival are accurate chromosome replication and segregation accord with correct cellular divisions. And this sentence is true for prokaryotes, as a and eukaryotes as the organisms that have a nucleus. And uh, this is true, but this, this scheme below uh, is an example of a eukaryotic cell division. And uh, this uh, C content is the minimum C content the cell can have. And the minimum C content is the cell that has unreplicated chromosomes in a sperm. And they can, this, is, this is half this genome. These, these two chromosomes uh, would be 1C, uh, and this is 2C, and this is 4C. And one implication of cell division is that the, the DNA content is half afterwards. So it has to replicate it again to start the next division. And uh, we will, uh, so I have marked this with the volume of these nuclei. And uh, in the following, I will focus on the chromosomes because apparently the chromosome distribution is essential for, for survival, for, for this, this claim with which I have started from Richard Dawkins. Uh, uh, now, the, uh, a relation to, to the book of, of, uh, of Schrödinger. It seemed to me that Schrödinger was aware of the literature uh, of, of, uh, of chromosome biology, of genetics of those days. He refers in his booklet to, to uh, C.D. Darlington, and uh, Darlington has written in the 30s a book, Recent Advances in Cytology, and I have the impression Schrödinger has copied most of this book in this chapter, uh, The Her 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 Mechanism. And uh, in, in fact, um, the f in the first half of the last century, uh, the, the unifying view of uh, genetics and cytology was the important problem. And all these people here worked on this, and, and it, this is in the, in the literature, it's called the chromosomal theory of inheritance. And the chromosomal theory of inheritance is a unifying theory of, of a fundamental unifying theory of genetics that identifies chromosomes as the carriers of the genetic material. In those days, one did not, was not quite sure what the genetic material is, but this was, and you can see the importance of this school, of this, of this, of this group of people was that there were three, three Nobel Prizes, uh, namely, namely the, 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 the Drosophila geneticist Morgan, that, that created the most fundamental uh, laws of genetics. And then uh, it, it was uh, uh, Barbara McClintock uh, who, who, who showed that uh, re recombination is, is reciprocal exchange of chromosomal elements. And uh, Kurt Stern, he had to emigrate from the Kaiser Wilhelm Institute of Berlin 
he did the same, uh, independently the same as Barbara McClintock and, and Harriet uh, Creighton, uh, uh, but with Drosophila and, uh, uh, and Barbara McClintock, she worked with, uh, uh, with Mace, with, uh, with, uh, and, uh, and uh, the, the, the third uh, Nobel Prize was uh, for, for radiation uh, mutation uh, Müller, and there is later another Nobel Prize uh, uh, in fact, by, by uh, the people who discovered uh, 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 the, the molecular basis of chromosome ends. Now, I, I want to, like uh, by Professor Sigmund, by, like how Sigmund, I would like to, to, to go a bit back in history and forwards, because in, in fact the whole meeting is, is a, is a a meeting of the history of science, and um, the, 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 the chromosome division and the chromosome segregation has been known since the, the middle of the 19th century, and, uh, it, but it was a descriptive way to look at this thing. It was called morphology or anatomy of cells. And it was in the same year when the, the uh, Watson and Crick published uh, the double helix, uh, there, there, a paper appeared in, in autumn uh, by Howard and Peltz, uh, and they, they, uh, they looked at the population of dividing cells, and if you look in the microscope at the population of dividing cells, most of them are, are at interface. The majority of cells and a few are divisions, so you can already guess that this is a long phase and this is a short phase. And they fed this with radioactivity and they measured which, which proportion of these interface nuclei are labeled and they found out that, that a proportion that of small nuclei is not labeled, a proportion of large nuclei is not labeled, but it in real is a group of nuclei that have a strong label. And they, they, they invented these uh, terms G1, synthesis phase, and G2, gap. G stands for gap. So gap one, S phase, gap two, this was a fundamental uh, discovery. And no one here in this audience knows that the, the, uh, Stephen Peltz, in fact, was from Austria, and his name was Stefan Richard Peltz, 1908-1973, and he worked in the Radium Institute. So he has a, even a link to this place here, and uh, he had to emigrate, uh, and, uh, he escaped, uh, the, the Hitler uh, uh, time, uh, and he took his violin, he was accompanied by his wife and his daughter, and he started a new life in, in, in England. He, he went to the British Army. In 1947, he became British, and he, he, was a, and he had a, 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 an important career in England. So, so I, I, I think he should have somewhere a plate on a wall, uh, uh, that uh, Stephen Peltz, uh, Stefan Richard Peltz, made the first molecular interpretation of uh, the mitotic cycle. The next, uh, and, and now I have contrasted this picture with, with, with the contribution of Kim. So people looked at this, described it, but Kim started to ask specific questions. And he, he, and he, he, he starting in, in, in with his work around in the, in the late 80s, and first in, in Edinburgh, and in, in where he was postdoc, and, and then in Vienna. And I just mentioned some of his findings. He, 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 uh, he worked on, on, on cell cycle regulation, cell cycle time. He isolated the first cell cycle mutations. He collaborated with Paul Nurse. He, 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 he discovered the, the anaphase promotics complex that triggers 
uh, the, uh, the, the onset of, of anaphase from, from, from metaphase to anaphase, I have to, to go this through first. He, fir uh, he first ide identified subunits of the so-called so cohesin complex uh, he, he, uh, uh, and the separates that opens this curve. And eventually he also found genes that have a crucial role in the meiotic recombination and chromosome segregation. So in the other type of division, in the division that leads to, this, to the sperm line. Uh, and uh, just one, one, uh, one very important uh, uh, discovery was the cohesion complex. Maybe we will hear about this during his talk. Uh, uh, then another important uh, discovery was 1957 by Herb Taylor. He, he asked uh, what happens with the DNA from a single chromatid uh, to become a duplicated chromosome. And, and he had two uh, working hypotheses. One was that this DNA is just meddled and the new are more or less a, a stochastic mix of old and new strands. And another a, 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 a hypothesis was that the new strands are half old, red, and half new. And, and, and uh, so he had these different models, and he could prove that this is the right, he could verify this. And, uh, and so this, this double strand, this covers of it two chromatids, has a one has this, that, and this, and this is the, the parental strand here. And he could conclude from his experiments uh, that only one single DNA molecule running from telomere to telomere, from end to end, uh, is, is in, in the chromatid. So he, uh, and, uh, and I have, uh, just to give you an impression how much DNA this is, the human uh, nucleus has about two meters of DNA, and if you calculate that the mean, so an average human chromosome has about one centimeter of DNA, one molecule running from one end uh, to the other, uh, and uh, only one. This was questioned later, but it, in, in, in in the meantime, this is safe knowledge. Uh, and here I have listed, again, as if you look at these things here, we just, uh, the only progress uh, from, uh, from uh, Herb Taylor uh, to the 80s was uh, the chromatin research. Uh, the, the nucleosomes were discovered, this was very important. But the basic questions, what happens here? Only Kim started to question this, and he, he asked, for instance, what facilitates the resolution of sister intertwining DNA that arises after replication? One assumes that this DNA is, so this has to be resolved by some way. Another point, how is DNA packaged during cell division in this, in these chromatids? They look like uh, 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 tubes and the DNA. How does this DNA be fitted in here? Uh, 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 why does chromatin not agglomerate? Why does, why does it form these nice chromatids, sister chromatids? How are the sister DNA molecules separated, packaged in these sister chromatids? And all these questions. And he found the answer. Now, now I want to go, uh, go back to another point. These are the so-called polythene chromosomes. And the scientists were always fascinated by the, by the large nuclei uh, in the salivary gland uh, of Drosophila and in certain flies and food paths. And these nuclei are, in fact, interface nuclei with uh, endo endocycle uh, and the endoroot reduplicated chromosomes, up to 100 cycles, produce uh, uh, 2,048 chromatids adjacent to each other. And, and it was, and from the, one calls these bands and interbands, 
and one, one thinks these, uh, uh, these regions uh, like here or here are active genes. So even Francis Crick was fascinated uh, by these pictures and uh, when I was in Oxford with Darlington, uh, the, the news was that he will give a, a seminar in, in, in at the Royal Society. So we all went down. It was great fun. Also some disappointment because the, the lecture of Francis Crick was 30 minutes and he said he will not tell us anything. He will just ex suggest an experiment and, uh, uh, from, from the American uh, Drosophila Genetics Berg Church, he read, his, he read his paper and suggested an experiment. So this, like the book of Schrödinger, this paper was an absolute catastrophe. Uh, so this was the Francis high expectation for this paper were quickly dashed. It was all a delusion and Francis went into a depression which lasted several months. So for me, uh, I think it's very interesting to ask why this could happen. You know, one argument uh, Peter said, uh, cited, it did not escape us that. And uh, his colleagues thought that Francis believed if you know chromosome structure, you can learn something about a gene and gene function. So he, he, he transferred the logic of a single DNA molecule where he could predict certain functions, replication, uh, the reading of the... He, he transferred this to a much more complex system. Uh, and maybe Kim can tell us why this paper was a catastrophe. And, uh, but it had, like, like uh, uh, Carl uh, told us that the book of Schrödinger suggested research. Uh, this, this paper, this controversial paper, in fact initiated chromatin research and Roger Kornberg and Aaron Klug, they discovered the nucleosome and uh, they, uh, it was also honored by a Nobel Prize. So uh, it has a, a positive side effect, this paper. Uh, I met, I met uh, Francis Crick a few years later and we talked again about this. So he had recommended, meanwhile he was not depressive anymore, uh, but he did not like uh, this conference. It was a, a human cytogenetics conference and the organizers asked him at the end of the conference that he should make some concluding remarks. So this is what he said. It is not enough in order to understand the book of nature to turn over the pages looking at the pictures. Painful so it may be, it will also be necessary to learn to read the text. So this, this was 1977, so, this, so I went home and thought I have to change my signs. Uh, and it was really Kim who came to Vienna and he was the person who taught us all how to read the text in the Book of Nature. So this is Kim and uh, his many discoveries from years of study in Edinburgh uh, in Seattle, in Cold Spring Harbor, as postdoc, and later as group leader in Cambridge, as director in Vienna and Oxford, are major contributions to our understanding of the essential molecular mechanisms of cellular proliferation. Uh, Kim is the founder of the Windobonian Oxonian School of Chromosome biology. This is a creation for me, but you, uh, but he has many, many important students and Kim attracts the best students and in his lab selection works. People are afraid of these lab seminars, you know, he can be aggressive. <laughs> 
and uh, but he has he has influenced the thinking of his students and he really over the world the best people go into him because they want to challenge and they learn something uh, so kim was honored he in 1997 he got the louis chanter prize uh, 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 it honors his research work on the molecular biology of the cell cycle and on gene cycling. It was mating time switch. 2007, again, the Foundation International Award for his discovery of the mechanism of chromosome segregation during cell division. And uh, the Silicon Valley Nobel Prize, uh, 2018 Breakthrough Prize in Life Sciences for elucidating the sophisticated mechanism that mediates the period of separation of duplicated chromosomes during cell division. Kim uses uh, yeast mainly uh, as his experimental system at the beginning. She, uh, fish and yeast, later bakers, uh, or budding yeast. Uh, essential genes and proteins are conserved from fungi to human over evolutionary distance of two billion years. Conserved functions have been selected by evolution and so have a purpose that eventually can be understood. This is very important for Kim, that things must have a purpose. So Kim's research, his approach is positivistic. I hope you agree with this statement. Uh, he is convinced that good science eventually tells us what he calls the, a universal truth. Kim believes in the ability of molecular facts to make scientific claims true or false. So he is influenced by Popper. Kim's advice uh, to students and postdocs the first step in solving complex questions is to articulate precisely what, you, what needs explaining. And this is the next se sentence. Uh, at, at, the, at first glance, it, for me, it was a bit shocking. Uh, but if you, if you read it in another way, you, you, you understand what he means. If important phenomena in, in biology cannot be explained in terms of what we already know, then one must invent something, uh, not a fairy tale, but a hypothesis, a working hypothesis. And one of his famous models he created was this cohesin loop model. It's a textbook uh, uh, stuff already, and the so-called loop extrusion uh, model, uh, probably we will hear about that uh, today. So this is the final slide. I just have summarized uh, what Kim's want to do. He, his, his oeuvre is an oeuvre of three science person lives already. But he wants to go on. He wants to understand the function of the SMC DNA motors in chromosome condensation, replication, segregation. Just what you see in this old description from the 19th century, namely the condensation, then the reduplication from here to here, the segregation from metaphase to anaphase, and the regulation of gene expression. So, Kim, now it's up to you. <laughs>